Ty Whitman. What I want to do today is go over and show you how we test for alkalinity in water. What alkalinity is, is it's a capacity of a water to neutralize acids or resist a change in pH. And it's very important to have alkalinity in the water because if your pH drops too low, the water can become very corrosive. If the water comes very corrosive, then you can have it eat away at the mains, it can cause main leaks, it also can leach lead and copper out of the pipes, which can be harmful. So we want to make sure we keep a certain level of alkalinity in our water, which will provide a buffer against any acids that could be added to the water after that. Another definition that you might see alkalinity as is the amount of acid that must be added to water to drop the pH for down to 4.5. Now a lot of people see this definition and they're like, okay, amount of acid that must be added to water to drop the pH down to 4.5, but they have no idea what 4.5 is and why 4.5. 4.5 is the measurement at which all alkalinity, 4.5 on the pH scale I should say, I, I should probably say that the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14 with 0 being the most acidic, 14 being the most basic, and basically what that is is pH stands for power of hydrogen and it's a quantification of the hydrogen ions in that molecule. The more hydrogen ions, the more acidic a solution becomes. The less hydrogen ions, the more basic a solution becomes. So as you add bases or alkalinity to that water, they can tie up those hydrogen ions as additional ones are added and stop the solution from appreciatively changing one way or another. So again, backed up, that's nutshell, uh, alkalinity in a nutshell. But anyway, like I was saying, 4.5 is the level at which all alkalinity in that water has been consumed. So if you drop that pH, if you're enough, allowed to add enough acids to that solution that the, four, that the pH will drop down to a 4.5 pH, all the alkalinity in that solution has been consumed. So we're going to do a little test for alkalinity today. It's done using 100 milliliters of water, pouring it into a beaker. You want to start with a graduated cylinder because it's a lot easier to measure it. Pour it into a beaker. We're going to set it onto our pH meter here. We want to make sure that the, turns, the stir stick is turned on. We're going to drop the probes down into that water. And we're first going to start by letting the pH measure itself. So it's measuring and it'll tell us when it's ready, it'll measure the pH of that water. All right, sorry to duck in the side here, but this is more important that you see than just me standing in front of the picture. So we've gone ahead and we've measured the pH in our water to start with, and it's an 8.414, 8.14 right here, which is, which is totally awesome. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, and add sulfuric acid to this. So we're going to move this over, and we're going to add some sulfuric acid to the mix. And you see a measurement system right here. We're just going to open this up and start titrating the sulfuric acid in with this. And when our pH hits that magical 4.5, we'll be able to equate that to what our alkalinity is. So now this, since this is finished water, we're ideally shooting for somewhere between a 40 and about a 45 of alkalinity. Alkalinity is, will come into this treatment plant at about 13. That is way too low. There's no buffer for the pH changes whatsoever. As you can see, it starts off reacting very, very slowly because with that alkalinity in the water is consuming the acid. As more and more of the alkalinity in the water becomes consumed, the acid that you add to that water causes a much greater change in the pH. And when you get below 4.5, it can change very quickly. So you drop that. I'm going to give it some time to stir in. I'm able to drop it pretty quickly because I kind of know where I'm going at right now for the most part. So we're down to 5.5. Right now we're going to titrate a little more in there. 5.3, 5.2. When it hits 5 even, I'm going to have to start being careful because it will change quick. 5.6, 5.5, 5.9, 5.6. 4.8. So I overshot it just a bit and you can see how quick that goes, 4.3. So if I were to actually be doing this in a lab test, I would actually redo it. But you can see how quickly 
that alkalinity can drop as you start getting rid of your, um, your alkalinity in the water, how quick that pH can drop, I should say. So our end right here at 45 milligrams is 4.38. Realistically, we're looking at about a 43. I overshot it a little bit. If I add just a little bit more acid right now that that alkalinity is consumed, it'll continue to drop. I add a little bit more and already we're down below four. We're in the threes, 3.9, 3.88. So you see is after the alkalinity is consumed, it can drop very quickly. So if you're ever doing an alkalinity test, and again, for the purpose of this video, I didn't want to drop, 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 because that doesn't make very good video. But uh, for the purposes of this test, you're going to get down there. When I got about 5.5 pH, I would have severely slowed it down, let it settle out a little bit, and then start adding it drop by drop till I get my exact pH of 4.5. That's basically how you do an alkalinity test. And I hope that helped a little bit just to kind of understand. Sometimes just seeing this stuff hands-on helps a lot versus reading in a book and not really understanding what goes on in the lab process. So, hope that helped a little bit. That's an alkalinity test, and uh, have a good day.